everyone and here we come to our final study in respect to justification and sanctification this is study number four in our previous three studies the first two being what is justification and our last study we did the first part of sanctification so here now we in we we have the second side of the coin with respect to sanctification as it will uh thank you for staying with these studies and i pray that you will be benefited you'll be enlightened and noble empowered to go out and to preach the message in its simplicity and in you know the way that god intended us to preach this message not with all the fanfare but in simplicity so that men and women could have a proper understanding of how god relates to us and how we should relate to god before we begin let us pray father in heaven we pray that as we go into this study of sanctification that you would be with us we thank you lord for giving us the power through your holy spirit to understand by forgiving us salvation through jesus christ and for giving us that will in our in ourselves that we do not have of our own power to want to do the things that you want us to do lord you know that is this is not of any of our doing god it is totally all you and as we are justified and sanctified as we are set apart for holy use lord use us to spread this message to the a dying world a dying church a dying people god people who are living in and languishing because they are not have been fed good provender please be with us even as we study now in jesus name amen okay so we're going to be doing what is sanctification and this is sanctification experienced so just as we had justification experience now we have sanctification experience what we studied in lesson 11 which is the previous lesson about sanctification is not the usual understanding of sanctification that comes to our mind in this lesson we will examine the second aspect of sanctification which is much more familiar to us for most often we think of sanctification as the growing process in which we walk with christ on a daily basis after we have been converted we will study this more familiar aspect in this lesson Question number one, what is God's will for us? And remember this, if we did justification, remember one of God, part of God's will was that we do not sin. Let's see here now in sanctification, what is God's will for us? First Thessalonians 4 verses 1 and 3, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have re received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would have bound more and more. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. So God's will for us is that we be sanctified. Let's see. What's the answer? Sanctification is a growing experience. Paul was deeply concerned that the members of the churches he had established would not remain at the would would not remain at their beginning stage of Christianity, but would grow and develop strong Christian characters. This is the daily work aspect of sanctification. Sanctification is a growing experience in which we understand more and more of God's will, and our character grows correspondingly. How do we grow? 2 Corinthians 3.18 tells us, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What's the answer? 
Yes, the answer is C. We become like Jesus by beholding him. Sad to say, many people think about A and B. They think change is very hard, so they, they, they try to find an easy way out. And others, they just try it harder and harder. Brethren, and we have all gone through it. The harder we try, is the harder we fall and the harder we fail. Right? So, let us not fail anymore. Let us just put our hands in Christ and allow him to do the work for us. As we spend time with God, we see more and more of his glory and we become more and more like him in character. Our lives reflect more of his holiness as we spend more time in his presence. Sanctification is not trying harder and harder to be righteous. I'll say that again. Sanctification is not trying harder and harder to be righteous. It is spending quality time with Jesus through Bible study, prayer, and thoughtful meditation so that we allow Jesus to change us into his likeness. Sanctification is allowing the Holy Spirit to take total control of our lives and choices so that he can perform a miracle of holy living in us. Notice, he performs the miracle of holy living in us. We don't try to do it ourselves. Were, where previously our self-centered words made selfish, sinful choices, now our spirit-centered words make unselfish, obedient choices. What does the Spirit of Prophecy tell us? Christ's Object Lessons, page 65, says, At every stage of development, our life may be perfect. Yet, if God's purpose for us is fulfilled, there will be a continual advancement. So, yes, just like a plant grows and every stage of that plant is perfect, you don't expect a seedling to give you fruit. A seedling is to be a seedling, and a tree is supposed to be a tree. So, at every stage of our development, we can be perfect, right? And everybody at different stages of their development. So, some people may be advanced, some people may be initially starting, but that does not mean that those two people can't be perfect in their, in their stage of development. And you notice, even though we are perfect in that stage, the stages continue. It continues, there will be continual advancement. Our high calling page 12, sorry, our high calling page 214, it says sanctification is a state of holiness without and within being holy and without reserve the Lord's, not in form but in truth. It is important to note that we do not grow into sanctification. We grow in sanctification. From the sanctified state in which God places us at conversion, and we talked about that in justification, we advance continually in maturity. As long as we do not allow sin to separate us from God, we continue to grow in holiness. Question number three. What was Paul's daily experience? I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15.31 What does the Spirit of Prophecy tell us? Testimonies, Volume 4, page 299. It says, Paul's sanctification was a constant conflict with self. He said he, I die daily. His will and his desires every day conflicted with duty and the will of God. Instead of following inclination, he did the will of God, however unpleasant and crucifying to his nature. The fallen nature does not appear, not sorry, the fallen nature does not disappear at conversion. And the sanctification experience is putting that nature with its selfish desires and inclinations to death every day. Perhaps it is important to remember that natural desires and inclinations are temptations, not sins. Even though they remain with us from birth to death, there is a simple bottom line to being saved. We must die daily to our natural desires and inclinations. So notice, we must not get temptation and sin mixed up. We will be tempted till Jesus comes. But we will. that doesn't mean that we will be sinning till Jesus comes. There is a vast difference 
And that is what people have made the mistake. They think that we are going to be sinning until Jesus comes. No. There has to come a time when we stop sinning. That doesn't mean that temptation will stop coming to us. Once there is a, once we are not in the presence of Christ physically, and when I say physically, I mean when he comes for us at the second coming, we will have an enemy to fight against. And we can't fight him. Christ has to do the fighting for us. So while we are on this earth, we will always be fighting. We will always be battling Satan. But when Christ comes to claim us at the second coming, we do not anymore have to worry about Satan because we will be in Christ's physical presence. Right? He has been in our he is in our physical presence now if we allow him to be. And we, we are waiting for that time when everything will be consummated, where we will be in his physical presence. And we thank God for that. So do not get temptation and sin mixed up. Then we will have the assurance of salvation, even if the theology of it all may not fully be understood. So, yeah, we may not understand all the theology. No, there's a difference of being, there's a difference of not understanding theology and, and, and accepting bad theology. So, for many years and decades, we have been accepting bad theology. And that's why we are in the poor state that we are in now as a, as a church and as in Christianity. But that is very different to not understanding fully theology, all theology, that, and everything that God has given us in His Word. We may not understand everything, but if we try, God is going to give us the wisdom. Every day our selfish nature must be crucified in a new commitment with the Lord. Disobedience and selfish acts are never part of sanctification. They must be rejected daily in order to maintain a sanctified experience. So that's something that we have to continually do because the spirit man and the flesh man is going to be fighting against each other all the time. All the time. Yes, that battle is going to continue till Christ comes. It does not mean that we will be sinning till Christ comes. And I keep on repeating that because there's this theology going around now that we will be sinning till Jesus comes. My brothers and my sisters, that is a lie from the pit of hell. We will be fighting till Jesus comes. But we not, we, that doesn't mean we'll be sinning till Jesus comes. A time will come when we will, be over, when we will overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation 12. And they overcame through the blood of the Lamb. They overcame, which means it was something that was completed. It is not something that they were wishing for. It was something that they experienced. Question number four. How can we live the sanctified life? So just, how, does, how does this happen? Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What's the answer? Yes, A and B are the answer. Sanctification is Christ living in me. Sanctification is crucifying the old nature. So you notice when Christ lives in us, he is the one who crucifies the old nature. Sad to say, C is what is believed by most of Christianity. We have a work to do and Christ has a work to do. No, 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 no. The work is all Christ. We must just allow him to do all the work in us. Our part is to allow him to do it. That's all, that's all we have to do. Allow him to do it. The work is his. It is absolutely crucial. It is absolutely critical to understand that sanctification is not our good works or partly our works combined with God's grace. Sanctification is God's work from beginning to end. And they keep on repeating that. Sanctification, just like justification, it is God's work from beginning to end. It is His grace, His power, His righteousness, all imparted to the willing disciple. Our part 
is to place our will on God's side and to do the things which allow His grace to continue to flow to us. So you see, the work of salvation is not our work. That is God's work. The work of surrendering and allowing our will to be placed on God, that is our work. Right? And that work doesn't that work does not merit our salvation. And even that work, God has to help us with it because in because as it is said in the word, every man has all the sheep has gone astray. Every man has gone their own way. So God is the one who has to draw us with his love. He is the one who even have to bring us back to and 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 put our hand put his hands in our hands. So I put his hands and take our hands and put it in his hands. That is what I want to say. So he even have to help us with our work. And the work that we have to do, is that is not the work that merits salvation. That is just the work to allow God to bestow this salvation process upon us. Right? So I hope we are, we are understanding the, 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 I hope we are understanding the, the, how sanctification and justification works and salvation works. All the work is God's work when it comes to salvation. Our work is just to believe in God, to place our wills in His will, and to accept the salvation process that He offers, to accept His grace. And all of those things and that I said that our, our work, those things do not merit us salvation. It only puts us in the place where God can start to do his work in us and through us. Question number five. What is the secret of success? I, I, and I, um, I, I think everybody will want to know this, right? What is the secret? Colossians 1.27 To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Is this a true or false statement? Christ dwelling in us is our only hope of success. That is a true statement. Christ dwelling in us is our only hope. The only way we can experience true sanctification is by asking Christ to live it within us through the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. It is called a mystery because so few people in the world, even among Christians, experience this on a daily basis. Have mercy. We cannot explain how this works, but we can experience it and it will make all the difference between victory and defeat in our lives. So we may not understand the, the intricacies of how it exactly works. We leave that for God to work out himself. But just because we don't understand something doesn't mean that we can't experience it. And that is what God wants us to experience. So in conclusion, just as there are two parts to justification, being declared forgiven and being transformed, there are two parts to sanctification, being declared holy and growing in holiness. The first part is declaration. The second part is experience. It is, it is incorrect to say that justification is the all-important part of salvation because that is when god declares me to be righteous while sanctification is secondary only because that is my work i want us to read that again and understand that there because a lot of people believe that and that is erroneous in justification our part is to believe god to choose to serve him to surrender everything to his control and to confess our sins notice all the things that we say that is our part None of those things merit our salvation. It only puts us in the position so that God can start his work in us and through us. It is God's part to forgive us, God to count us righteous, to cleanse us from the filthy garments to which we have accumulated, which we have accumulated over the years, and to create a new person with completely different values and desires than the old man. In sanctification, it is our part to obey, to choose to obey God's commands. 
to surrender our weak fallen natures to him daily and to carry out whatever God makes possible in our lives. It is God's part to count us holy, to dwell within us constantly, to empower our wills to carry out what we have chosen and to give us the ability and strength to obey him in all of the areas which he requires obedience. What God commands, he always enables. I will say that again. What God commands, he always enables. So God doesn't, God never asks us to do something that he himself will not help us to do or empower us to do. So he says, be ye holy for I am holy. If he has asked us to be holy, then he will enable us to be holy. The bottom line is sanctification is by faith alone just as justification is, not by faith plus works. It has become quite popular to say that sanctification is the, a fruit of the gospel. In other words, we have been saved by justification alone and sanctification is the fruit or the result of our being saved. Once our salvation has been accomplished up front, then the process of sanctification continues for the rest of our lives. This belief does not agree with 2 Thessalonians 2.13. God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Here is nothing, here nothing is even mentioned about being saved by justification. Sanctification and belief are the two prerequisites to salvation. We are saved through sanctification. How tragic it is that Christ's atoning death and the Holy Spirit work have been divided so that as some claim, we are justified by Christ's work and sanctified by the Holy Spirit's work. Brothers and sisters, that statement there comes from an erroneous understanding of who God is, who Christ is, and who the Spirit, Holy Spirit is. That is all I will say on that for this time. But if we understand, and that is why the doctrine of God is so important, we do not divide the work and place things in an erroneous position so that we mess up even how understanding how we are saved. Justification is not somehow more essential than sanctification. Please note that they are both important. Sanctification is a vital part of the saving process. It is a a causative factor in salvation, not just a result of salvation. I'll say that again. Sanctification is a vital part of the saving process. It is a causative factor in salvation. So it means that it, it has something to do with our salvation, not just a result of salvation. If, as some claim, sanctification is only a fruit of the gospel, then it is not essential for salvation or to salvation. It is nice to have, and it will come eventually, but it is not necessary to be saved. That is what a lot of people believe. It is nice to me live a holy and a, a acceptable life to God, right? But even if I don't live like that, I am saved because I am justified. That is what a lot of people believe. Oh my, I pray that we don't fall into that trap. Very simply, some believe that justification saves, but sanctification does not save. But if sanctification is part of the saving process rather than a fruit of the saving process, then holiness is essential to salvation and to a saving relationship with God. Dying daily to serve is not a hoped for fruit of salvation. It is a necessary part of salvation. It, does not, it doesn't just come along at a time, a later time. Without holiness, we will not see God. And I hope we know that. Sanctification is holiness declared and holiness experienced. I'll say that again. Sanctification is holiness declared when we are justified and holiness experienced through our entire life as we grow. If we are not living a sanctified life, we are not saved. To think of sanctification as only a fruit of salvation means that it is not is an accessory to salvation. We can be saved without fully experiencing sanctification. That is a lie from Satan. 
But God's word tells us that sanctification is a necessary part of the saving process. Justification and sanctification are united in the saving process. To separate them and to make one part more important to salvation is to do violence to the gospel of Christ, which, sad to say, many theologians and pastors and priests have done in Christianity. And that is why people outside of Christianity look at Christianity as a big joke because we are not experiencing what God has asked us to experience. And we are not experiencing it because we are, we are just not following what he has said to do. We are making up our own fables in Christianity and our own traditions and that is what is robbing us of the experience. The fourth gospel that sanctification is secondary to justification leads to the conclusion that some sin is allowable in the saved experience. I want you to read that sentence again for yourself. But the Bible teaches that sin separates us from God. Isaiah 59, 2. When sin is cherished, Satan takes control of the heart and the Spirit of God is driven out. How could we possibly think that we are in a safe condition while sinning? I ask, how can we think that? How can we possibly think that? Self-delusion and rationalization are major components of Satan's attempt to deceive us into a false sense of security, which is what 99% of Christianity is going through right now. Only when our sins are confessed can we be accepted by God. Some feel that this is a very discouraging understanding of the gospel, since we find ourselves in sin so often, yes. We will study this more in detail in the final lessons of this course. So as we continue in our lessons, we will see how we can overcome this aspect of discouragement and, and we find ourselves in sin. We know we find ourselves in sin so often. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't, I, I, like I can't, I can't achieve this thing that God has asked me to achieve. So let me make up a gospel that will make me feel good and I'll be all well and good to go in, into the kingdom of God. We, and, and you notice the, the, what's the first words in this, in this paragraph here? It says self-delusion and rationalization. That is what Satan uses to deceive this entire generation of Christians. May God shield us from the, the, the lies of the enemy. The following practical suggestion about our personal involvement in the justification sanctification process is recommended. It is for you to yield up your will to the will of Christ. And as you do this, God will immediately take possession and work in you to do and work in and work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Your whole nature will be then brought under the control of the Spirit of Christ, and even your thoughts will be subject to him. You cannot control your impulses your emotions as you may desire, but you can control the will and you can make an entire change in your life. By yielding up your will to Christ, your life will be hid with Christ in God and allied to the power which is above all principalities and powers. As taken from Testimonies, Volume 5, page 514. Even if theological distinctions might be difficult to understand. We can do this. We can yield to the will, the will to Jesus. We can allow him to take full possession of our lives. We can allow him to do his good work in us. Only in this way will we have any power over our fallen natures and Satan. I want you to notice how we will have power over our fallen natures and Satan. Eh? If we will only yield up the will daily to Jesus, we will have power beyond our ability to explain. And that is what we are looking for, brothers and sisters. 
and we will not have to rely on a false gospel to give us false assurance of salvation. God's way is always better than human devising. May the gospel of Abraham and Jesus and Paul be our gospel today. So brothers and sisters, I hope that this, these studies have been a benefit to you. I hope that you will go over all the notes in justification and in sanctification because it is very important for us to understand these things. Very important. So as we continue in the Project 1888, you will receive more videos concerning uh, other aspects of that message. This is basically the essence of what Wagner and Jones were presenting in 1888. And it has been distilled down to its most basic form. And what I want us to note is that the 1888 message that was presented by Jones and Wagner, that was the beginning, as it says, by the prophet. It was the beginning of the latter rain. It was the beginning of that angel who would come down and lighten it with his, with his glory. So which means that had they continued and the church leadership had accepted what was presented by Jones and Wagner, then we would have had much more than we have now. So brethren, they began it. We need to finish it. So we will have, we will, have, we will experience much more than they did. Should we hold fast to the faith that has been given to us by through Jesus Christ? So brothers and sisters, thank you very much. Continue to study. Continue to to share. Continue to ask questions and we will continue to provide answers by the grace of God through his holy word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we have studied the two parts of salvation, sanctification, justification. And Lord, you know that when we are justified and when we are sanctified, the final outcome will be our glorification where we will see you face to face where there will be nothing between this is what we ask for this is what we want this is what we want to experience even now today in our lives we don't want to live disheveled christian lives that is void of any power that is a joke to those that are outside of christianity and a mockery to even christ and all of heaven we want to live empowering lives, God. We want to live lives that will show forth your glory, that will honor you in everything with all our substance. Our very thoughts and our words will be, be, will be the very thoughts and words that heaven will approve of. Being in our presence will be like being in the presence of Jesus. This is what we want, Lord. Not to say that we have anything in ourselves to merit this, Lord. We look to you, Lord. We look to Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Not even our faith can save us from sin. Only you can, Lord. So help us even to this end. In Jesus' name, amen.